Welcome to Jamaica Magazine. Oh, wait, let's say that in Spanish. Bienvenidos a la revista de América. Soy Adrian Atkinson. Today we're highlighting three different observances. That's right, it's English Language Day, Spanish Language Day, and World Book and Copyright Day. As you go about your day, keep this quote in mind. Knowledge is the eye of desire and can become the pilot of the soul. And on that note, please stay with us. We have the news after this message. The Joint Select Committee of Parliament reviewing the Domestic Violence Act wants to hear from you. Review the act and share your opinions with the committee. You can find a copy of the act on the Parliament's website at www.japarliament.gov.jm under the heading Publications. Once you have reviewed the act, submit your written opinions by Tuesday, April 30, 2024 to Clark to the Houses, Gordon House, 81 Duke Street, Kingston, or clark at japarliament.gov.jm. Let your voice be heard. Theodore Henry and this is your GIS News for Tuesday, April 23, 2024. An immediate assessment of water capacity at all public schools in Hanover and Westmoreland is to be undertaken. This is to be done by the Ministry of Education and Rural Water Supply with the aim of increasing water storage at the facilities over the next four to six weeks. The measure is among other drought mitigation initiatives outlined by the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation at a press briefing on Monday. Minister with Responsibility for Water, Senator Matthew Samuda, says it's to prevent any possible disruption of classes that may occur due to the impact of the drought facing the western side of the country. As you would have seen, the projections for increased rainfall do not paint the picture we would like. As such, we will be intervening to ensure that all of our schools have adequate storage. I've also had discussions with Mr. Kevin Carr about increasing the monitoring and rate of trucking to our educational institutions. We don't intend to allow for any learning loss with any of our schools. Now, our regional manager has done a good job in communicating with the regional directors of the Ministry of Education and indeed all of our schools. We will be moving to set up a troubleshooting network by way of a WhatsApp group and an email line dedicated to schools to ensure that they are not disrupted. Another measure targeted at the hotel sector involves a safety net being put in place along Western St. James to Western Westmoreland by the National Water Commission. This is in anticipation of the Memorial Day weekend in May, marking the secondary peak season. Minister Samuda says this is to assure hoteliers that their businesses are being protected and will not be disrupted. Meanwhile, the installation of a standby generator at the Logwood Water Treatment Plant is projected to be completed by this coming weekend. Acting President of the NWC, Kevin Carr, gave the update during Monday's press briefing. Those of you who are living in the area who are familiar with frequent power outage in the area, and this standby generator is to minimize the interruption when there is a single phase or low voltage problem. Mr. Carr assures that water trucking will continue in earnest in severely affected areas in the West. Regarding the Great River system, the NWC's acting president says declassification has begun. Simple term is washing sediments from the pipe and this activity will bring an addition of one million gallon per day, which we will dedicate solely for ANOVA. And this water will reach as far as Green Island, so we will minimize the, the need for logwood to go to that space, which means more water will be available to pump to the communities in Whitehall, Red Ground, and Environs. 
Picking up on the conversation, Minister Samuda adds that a comprehensive assessment is being done for critical pumping facilities in the West to enable appropriate budgetary allocation, especially for generators. The minister says a meeting is being scheduled with the Jamaica Public Service Company and the NWC to coordinate a maintenance schedule that minimizes disruptions to water supply due to loss of power. So NWC may have a scheduled supply, but JPS has scheduled um, works to take place on their power supply at the time where we need to pump water. I've met with Minister Vaz, and we will be convening a discussion between the NWC and JPS to ensure that works where possible, not always possible, where maintenance works in these areas that are disproportionately affected by water supply that we coordinate. The Minister with Responsibility for Water is sent a strong warning to persons who are allegedly carrying out malicious disruption of the NWC water system to benefit from trucking the commodity. We've asked the police to take a look at those allegations. If anyone is tampering with the Water Commission network, we're asking you to report it to the police or to report it to the Office of the President or to myself. We have no evidence of it. But the accusations continue and we want to assure citizens that if they report it, we will investigate and we will punish anyone who is caught in that regard. Minister Samuda says while the trucking of water may not be the best option for persons, it is the government's emergency response option at the moment. He assures that there will be an increase in the trucking of water over the next four to six weeks. In other news, Prime Minister Andrew Holness is urging young people to take advantage of the many opportunities being offered by the government to elevate themselves. He was speaking at the Prime Minister's Youth Award for Excellence ceremony held on the lawns of Jamaica House on the weekend. Twenty recipients were recognized for exceptional achievement in various fields in 2023. Each of you here this evening as nominees and recipients of the Prime Minister's National Awards for Excellence holds within you the power to inspire and influence those around you. Tonight, I charge you with a mission to see yourselves not only as recipients of accolades and awards, but more so as beacons of hope and agents of positive change. Prime Minister Holness reminded the audience of mostly young persons of the no guarantor requirement at the Students' Loan Bureau, which will benefit over 4,000 students, $200 million in tuition support to benefit 1,000 needy students, and scholarships through the National Housing Trust for students studying engineering, construction, and architecture. This will support 10 students per year with $1 million each. Mr. Holness also spoke of the free tuition at the Heart NSTA Trust and the rollout of the Community Action for Rewarding Engagement Care Initiative. This will provide selected trainees with a monthly transport grant of $15,000 and an additional stipend of $13,000. Under my administration, we have made a priority to advance our youth like never before. We are making it easier for you. You now have no excuse to get out there and get a skill and get certified. And finally, the Heart NSTA Trust has developed a risk-based strategic plan to increase enrollment and certification of young persons. The three main areas of focus include enhancing the quality of training and certification, increasing services to at-risk youth, and strengthening the technical and vocational education and training TVET ecosystem. The strategy will target, among other things, the enrollment of over 122,000 trainees in various programs with a projection of more than 50,000 obtaining certification within the 2024-2025 financial year. As the program strengthens and more persons get on board, the Heart and STA is targeting a certification rate of 75%. The training will be delivered across its network of 26 operated institutions. This will be done in partnership with more than 75 community training interventions, enterprise and work-based training interventions, and adult education sites. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching. 
Let's get a recap of what happened in the office of the Prime Minister this past week. Mr. Andrew Holness was in Trelawney on Friday for the opening of the Falmouth Artisan Village. This artisan village stands as a testament to the power of collaboration, innovation, and dedication to preserving and promoting our rich cultural history. Mr. Holness says building the artisan village is a deliberate attempt by the government to ensure the diversification of the tourism product. It is through collaborative efforts that the vibrant spirit of Jamaican craftsmanship, artisanship, and entrepreneurial spirit of our people have found a new home on this historic site of Hamden Wharf. The construction was financed by the Tourism Enhancement Fund at a cost of 5.7 million US dollars. It is part of the 700 million dollar Hampden Wharf development project. The village, which is the first of its kind in Jamaica, is poised to be replicated in Ocho Rios, Montego Bay and Negro. I'm always happy to share spaces with young people who are enthusiastic and passionate, ambitious and industrious, and intelligent and innovative. And I believe that's a description for all the young people gathered here today. Mr. Holness on the weekend recognizing the exceptional achievement of 20 young persons in various fields. The occasion was the 2023 Prime Minister's National Youth Award for Excellence held on the lawns of Jamaica House. Over the years, we have expanded the award categories from eight in 2018 to now over 20 this year. The categories include sports, agriculture, youth development practitioner, and youth serving organization. Individuals were also awarded for achievements in arts and culture, academics, leadership and journalism, and social media influencer. Other areas include entrepreneurship, nation building, international achievement, innovation in science and technology, and environmental protection. Rashane Taylor was given the Prime Minister's Special Award for Exceptional Achievement as an illustrator. He is the creator director and lead artist for the Paint the City project. Each of you here this evening as nominees and recipients of the Prime Minister's National Awards for Excellence holds within you the power to inspire and influence those around you. Tonight, I charge you with a mission to see yourselves not only as recipients of accolades and awards, but more so as beacons of hope and agents of positive change. The Prime Minister's Youth Award for Excellence was introduced in 1998 to recognize young Jamaicans aged 15 to 29. Since then, more than 300 awards have been presented. Many of our past recipients have gone on to further excel nationally and internationally across various sectors. Still at the award ceremony, Prime Minister Holness shared the many opportunities available for the development of Jamaica's youth. They include the removal of guarantor requirement when applying for a loan through the Students' Loan Bureau. This year, 4,000 Jamaican students who rely on the student loan will not have to face that obstacle anymore. Mr. Holness also points out that $200 million has been set aside in the current fiscal budget to provide tuition support for 1,000 students in need. There is also the National Housing Trust Scholarship Program to support students studying subjects such as civil engineering, construction management, and architecture. Ten students per year will receive up to $1 million each towards their tuition in this area. Further to that, the government last year launched the Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics STEM Tertiary Scholarship, which is assisting 1,000 students from low-income households over the next five years to pursue a STEM teaching career. This 
represents a total investment of over $2.4 billion in our youth. In the meantime, Mr. Honus says over 120,000 young people have registered for technical and vocational training at the Hart NSDA Trust since all courses were made free of cost. This year, Hart will introduce the Community Action for Rewarding Engagement Care Initiative. This will provide selected trainees with a monthly transport grant of $15,000 and an additional stipend of $13,000. We are making it easier for you. You now have no excuse to get out there and get a skill and get certified. In addition, 6,220 young people have been trained under the Jamaica National Service Corps since 2017, with 4,259 matriculating to the JDF. Similarly, over 500 persons are gaining internship through the LIFT program. Under my administration, we have made a priority to advance our youth like never before. And that's it for Jamaica House Weekly. Be sure to join us next time for more of the news stories coming out of the office of the Prime Minister. Jamaican coffee is renowned for its rich flavor and distinctive aroma, cultivated in the island's fertile soil and ideal climate. Made in Jamaica is next. And that's the satisfying sound that coffee brings. of the kaffir plant and the source for coffee. These beans have long been consumed <sighs> by humans since their arrival in Jamaica in 1728. Coffee beans have had a protracted and nuanced relationship with the nation's culture and economics. From then forward, our local farmers have dedicated their lives to cultivating this energizing source of nutrients in order to give both Jamaicans and visitors a flavor of the island with every sip. So how do our farmers acquire the knowledge of the land to provide this kind of provision? Well, here's one approach. We are here at the Blue Mountain Coffee Trade Day. We today at this coffee trade are here to trade with the farmers, providing them with the necessary information as it relates to training and extension service delivery. So what does this training entail? It entails unholding from the preparation of the land straight to marketing as you your crops. We have a great partnership with these farmers and today we cannot say it's a success. Farmers can stabilize their output and retain their dividends thanks to this partnership. After all, it is their bread and butter. The brand Blue Mountain Coffee, which we support and endorse through the Ministry of Tourism, through the Ministry of Agriculture, through the TEF Fund, through our Alex Platform, through Radha and through Jackra and all our partner agencies, is a big brand. And we endorse, we support, and for this brand to remain viable, we we must support our farmers who are the main, main, main producers. Coffee is a common source of income for many people, contributing to economic growth and enhancing community livelihoods. Coffee beans are selected and separated before being used for drinks that can be consumed hot, cold, or iced. Where, though, is it cultivated meets the growers? I'm living into a farming community and over 80% of our farmers in the community plant coffee. And we are told that we produce the best coffee in Jamaica and also the best tasting coffee 
in the world. I'm a member of Farada. Yes, and I get all this app support. As a woman in coffee, I don't have to work with anyone. I work at my farm. I prune it, I weed it, I fertilize it, everything I do. My farm is in Flamstead, East Rural St. Andrew. So the higher your farm is, the better it is. Taste and everything. Blue Mountain Coffee. From Farmer's Trade Show to the Blue Mountain Coffee Festival, a demonstration of the importance of coffee in Jamaica and the agriculture sector. I drink coffee every day. I make love to my coffee in the morning, so I drink a strong cup of coffee every morning. We are to come out to Blue Mountain Coffee Festival to come and see all the Blue Mountain farmers providing us with the finest and best coffee there is. The coffee is delicious, and from coffee comes many other products. As we conclude our brief adventure, this is just one of the ways our coffee finds its way into the hands of many coffee lovers. The Joint Select Committee of Parliament reviewing the Domestic Violence Act wants to hear from you. Review the Act and share your opinions with the committee. You can find a copy of the Act on the Parliament's website at www.japarliament.gov.jm under the heading Publications. Once you have reviewed the Act, submit your written opinions by Tuesday, April 30, 2024 to Clark to the Houses, Gordon House, 81 Duke Street, Kingston, or Clark at japarliament.gov.jm. Let your voice be heard. Jamaican exporters offer a diverse range of high-quality products, reaching international markets and fostering economic growth through trade. Up next, we get an understanding of the 4E strategy that's helping them to do that. The Trade Board Limited TBL, through its 4E strategy, is improving the ease of exporting with its best-in-class services. Our mission is to efficiently support Jamaica's economic development by contributing to an enabling ecosystem for trade growth and development, increase local and foreign investment, and sustain job creation. Through the provisions of relevant trade-related information, the issuance and regulation of trade license and certification. Engaging in cross-border trade has the benefits of increasing companies' income from sales and reducing the unit costs of production. Companies engaged in export trade also gain new knowledge, experience, insights and opportunities. So at the Trade Board, we develop what we describe as our 4E strategy for support in the growth of exports. This strategy involves educating, enabling, expediting, and evaluating. The Jamaica Trade Information Portal, JTIP, is one of the primary tools through which the Trade Board Limited provides information and education to, to traders via the internet. It provides a one-stop portal through which businesses wishing to engage in cross-border trade involving Jamaica can obtain all the relevant information they need. The JTIP includes information on trade laws, regulations, standard procedures, 
guidelines, tariff fees, taxes, and the details of trade agreements, etc. Recent expansions to the portal include presenting content also in Spanish and French. An Export Academy offers customized training for entities or individuals to enhance their trading know-how. It's not like you have to matriculate to get into a university or anything like that. What it really is, is that we have developed an instrument where we capture from the potential exporter what, they, what exactly they want to do. Based on how they fill out that um, questionnaires, we know where the critical knowledge gap is. And, and what we do, we send that information to them automatically. Right? And we have a number of quizzes and so on, and follow-ups that take place. The Export Academy is a free online service provided by the TBL. The Trade Board is also engaged with providing market intelligence and trade compliance information through its enhanced website, which will become accessible at the end of July 2023. Jamaican businesses who register with the Trade Board Limited will be able to gain to go online and identify the best target markets for their products and services access doing business guides, collect relevant market information about any country or industry of interest. You also help to find new opportunities worldwide. As an enabling entity, the Trade Board guides manufacturers and exporters in their conformance to the various trade criteria. Exporters also get contact details of potential interested parties, market experts, and relevant trade organizations in important countries. There is also handholding through the trade process and access to tools like a duty calculators and a currency converter. In support of its strategy to expedite, the TBL is employing various approaches to reduce the time it takes to do business. Efficiency, reliability, and speed are enhanced through up-to-date technology that modernizes trade and digitizes all its processes. One of the recent reforms to enhance export is the electronic certificate of origin. We have developed and introduced a digital version of the product analysis form, which has significantly sped up the process of product analysis, application, and assessment for compliance with the criteria of the respective agreements. We commit that within one working day or eight hours, you will get your export license. Certificate of origin, also within the eight hour period. Letters of origin, eight hour, eight hour period, et cetera, et cetera. And these commitments are made public. So exporter knows what to expect in terms of turnaround time and they can plan their business accordingly. The fourth strategy of the Trade Board is to evaluate by continuously reviewing operational efficiency and effectiveness. The entity is also regularly assessing and responding to changing trade context domestically, regionally, and internationally. We're at the end of our program, but be sure to join us again tomorrow for another lineup geared towards providing you with information on the government's policies and initiatives for building a better Jamaica. You may visit our website, jis.gop.jn, to re-watch this show or to catch up on others we have on the site. I'm Adrian Atkinson from our production team at the JIS. Thank you so much for watching.
This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.